what is going on today people uh yeah a lot of exciting uh exciting shit just happened today i got stopped uh for a dot level two inspection they went through my logs and uh yeah I did get a violation. I sure fucking did. Uh, I got a, uh, I got a violation on running off-duty PC. And it was legit an accident. Like, I was not meaning to run on PC. I run local. So, I have no reason really to use PC unless Unless I am, uh, unless I am in line getting ready to check in and, uh, the line is really long and I have, I, I need to get a 30 in. I can go on PC and, uh, once I put myself on PC, then if the line moves or whatever and I, and I have to move, it won't kick me back off off duty. It won't kick me back on the drive line. Uh, that is really the only reason why I have to be on PC. Well, the other day, that such, that such occurrence happened. That situation came up and I went on PC I got hooked up to my trailer, got through the line, all that, and I forgot to go back on duty. So, I forgot to go back on duty, and I drove uh, a little over two hours, two and a half hours on PC. Now, granted, I got a service violation, but I did not get a ticket, and it wasn't a, I didn't get a, uh, a citation for it. Does it really matter? I, as far as companies, like if I was to switch jobs and you know want to go somewhere else, probably not. Um, it really probably, I mean, it's probably not going to be an issue for my company because it wasn't a uh, safety-related truck issue. My truck passed inspection with flying collars. Um, like I said, it, it passed. Like I said, it passed everything that they were looking for with flying collars. They they said my truck was perfect. It was just that uh, it was that log violation that got me messed up. <clears throat> so uh, I got to deal with that. That's gonna be on my record for two or three years, however many years it takes for it to get off. But I just gotta be more uh, gotta be more cautious. And, uh, and remember to go back off duty because, I mean, I'm not going to stop doing that because when I'm sitting in line, I, I could be sitting in line for, you know, 30 minutes. Well, that's my break right there. So I can go off duty PC and, you know, I can, if a truck moves or whatever, I can inch up or whatever um, and, not, and not disrupt my break. So, I mean, and I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm technically driving because the truck is moving a little bit, but as far as um, as far as like me actually driving somewhere, and I'm not even I'm not driving somewhere. I'm on I'm already there, um, so it, that's not a big issue. Now, what is a big issue is like I said, driving for you know over two and a half hours, and. Uh, on PC, that they seem to frown upon that. So, yeah. Um, as uh, as you see, I got you in my truck. Um, there, like I said, as far as I know, there's no um, there's no law against recording in the vehicle while you're you know while you're driving. 
Um, it's like having a conversation if somebody was sitting in the passenger seat with me. Uh, like I said, now once you get with a big major carriers, they might have an issue with it insurance wise uh, because they have people, apparently they have people that monitor that. That's just what I've heard. And uh, that's what I've seen from other, you know, truck driving channels that I've seen or channels that, you know, the people drive trucks. Um, that's the issue that I've seen them run into. But, you know, I'm a professional driver. I can drive and have a conversation at the same time. It's not that difficult. I mean, <clears throat> it's not that difficult. And there's no difference than, you know, all these truckers that you see with the big ass headsets and the, you know, everything else carrying on a conversation with somebody on the phone. Which, I mean, it is what it is. And I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to you guys until, until either I stop or the video cuts me off. It, it is what it is. So, oh, it's just been a day. It's been a morning already. I was gonna leave early this morning. And I'm sorry, this road right here is really rough, so bear with me. It's gonna get probably really loud. The road noise is gonna be loud. Just, uh, <coughs> just bear with me. But like I said, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really rough through here. Oh, good old Arkansas. The one thing that is really good about Arkansas though, give me a second, I'm gonna be nasty for a minute. good thing about Arkansas is especially the route that I take through Arkansas which is uh, I-55 and 55 um, when you go in like when you get right into Arkansas there's a uh, there's a welcome center and they have free coffee There's a lot of power trucks, like a convoy of power trucks, like uh, utility trucks, power utility trucks, going somewhere. I don't keep up with the news or what what's going on in other parts of the country, so there could be a hurricane or whatever and they need extra trucks. <coughs> but like I said, uh, I want to work on getting me a microphone, so... I'm not, I don't feel like I'm yelling at you guys all the time. Um, that's one thing I really do want to invest in. Um, I did invest in a uh, phone mount. Uh, actually, I invested in two phone mounts. Um, one is for the truck to stay in the truck. And then the other one that you all are on now can be switched back and forth from the truck to my car. And, uh, so I can make videos on the way home or on the way to work um, and I can take that phone mount and put it in here and make videos for you guys here. Um, so like I said, I really like that uh, the rest area there, or yeah, the rest area uh, slash welcome center coming into Arkansas because not only do they have free coffee, but they also have uh, like, um, Right now they're doing free meal uh, meal packets. Um, it's just add water, kind of instant deal going on with that. Um, but it's free. It's all like everything they have in there is uh, free, food and drink wise. So um, if you're thirsty or whatever, and I'm sure if you ask them, they would you know fill you up a cup of water or a bottle of water or whatever. Um, if you if you ask them, um, and you could get I mean you could get it out of the bathroom, but who wants to drink out of a bathroom faucet? Just, just saying. I don't particularly. Like, if I was dying of thirst, I probably would. But 
and their coffee is fucking delicious, you guys. The best coffee I've had in a while. A really good while. I mean, it's better than the pilots and stuff. Um, so, like I said, I just, I like this ride. I like this ride over through here. But honestly, I, I just, uh, I don't like the fact that I passed, you know, four way stations in a matter of, you know, 110 miles. Um, it's now if you're if you leave early enough, where you're um, you're coming through here at like four o'clock in the morning, then they're usually closed at that time. Um, so it's not a big issue. But like me, I was gonna get an early start today, but I decided not to, um, just for the simple fact that I was tired. I was dog tired last night. Um, the night before last, I slept in my car at the yard because I got home super, super ass late, and uh, it would it just made sense for me to stop, make a little bed in the car, and uh, sleep in the car for the night. Um, which I've only had to do that once since I've worked here, so I'm not complaining. Uh, <coughs> it wasn't that bad. Uh, honestly, it wasn't cold. It wasn't that cold um, during the night. I had to get up one time and start the start the car and let it warm up a little bit. And then I was fine until I left. Um, one thing I do want to uh, get on this truck is a uh, bag, like a uh, like a duffel bag, but like kind of like the rugged style um, duffel bag. And I want to put me like a uh, a wool blanket. Um, my uh, crank radio, my crank emergency radio, uh, some lighters, um, you know, a knife of, of some sort, um, just and have like a little a little pack that stays on the truck because you know it's coming on winter. It's gonna start snowing soon, and you know. They could close the road down, and I could be stuck. I could be stuck for you know four or five hours, and uh, who knows? I mean, I could be could be running low on fuel, which is highly unlikely because we have our own fuel tanks at the yard that we fill up from you know every morning, or we have the option to. But you know, I didn't fuel up today because I'm bobtailing all the way to Mem uh, Memphis, uh, and I'll just be I'll be carrying a container bag. But I will fill up tonight when I get back. I'll fill the truck up. Um, I'll stop on the way to the to the yard and uh, put some def in. Uh, fill that up, top it off for Monday uh, to start the process all over again. So, and I have like I have a duffel bag that I could probably make work for right now, um, but it's not a quality bag. It's um got some ribs in it and stuff like that and you know dust can get into it real easy <coughs> excuse me I don't know what's wrong with me today but yeah um, I want to have that pack in here um, one thing I do need to do this weekend too is I need to buy more drinks um, I usually keep like uh, a couple 12 packs in here and a 12 pack will last me about a week so if I have like three or four 12 packs in here then it'll last me four weeks um, because I drink you know I switch I don't just drink you know soda all the time I, I, I try to drink as much water as I can um, I, I make tea at the house and uh, bring it um, and bottles and stuff with me so like I said I can make a 12 pack last about about a week uh, maybe a little less but like I said uh, if I had you know four 12 packs in here I'd be I'd be set for pretty close to four weeks so that's that's uh, that's a good thing I I, I want to get some more gum um, I like the uh, I like the Mentos uh, gum it's really uh, really nice
for that reason. I don't have to uh, I don't have to fiddle with uh, wrappers and all that. I can just pop it open, pop a couple pieces in my mouth, and keep on going. Uh, I got these mounts for my phone. Um, the one that stays in the truck has a uh, it plugs into the cigarette lighter, and it uh, it has a USB port in it, so I can plug my charger in and uh, plug my phone up while it's you know while it's just sitting here. Um, so, like I said, that's that's a really good thing. Um, and honestly, it seems like it seems like you know th this phone mount's a little shaky. Um, and I'm sorry for that, guys. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. It, it it's trucking. Um, there's bumps in the road, and uh, the roads aren't all that great. Once you get down, uh, especially into Memphis, I will probably never ever record anything in Memphis because it's uh, such shitty road conditions. Um, it's kind of pointless to record. Um, so yeah, probably won't be doing that. But roads like these, we can record on all day. Y'all can deal with a little bit of shaking. Uh, it ain't gonna, ain't gonna hurt you. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I've been dealing with today is uh, DOT. And you know, I was a little bit nervous because I knew. I knew that they were gonna see it, but I was hoping that they would just give me a warning and let me go. But no harm, no foul. I mean, it's on my record. It is what it is. But. Don't you just love these truckers in these older style, long stretched out semis that think they are just the shit and you know, they just wanna run over everybody. They don't give a shit about anybody else but themselves. And I hate it. I, I hate their attitudes. Um, they won't let you over if you need to get over. They'll just, they'll cut you off. And uh, like I said, I, I just don't like their attitudes. That dummy was texting and driving. Stupid people. Stupid people, man. See, that's one thing I don't do. I do not text and drive. Um, the closest thing that I will ever do on my phone while I'm driving is this. And like I said, it's basically having a conversation with somebody that's in the truck with me. It's no different. And it's no different than having, you know, a headset in, um, <clears throat> having a conversation on the phone. Has, you know, it doesn't even, <clears throat> it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. So, like I said, now let's talk, let's talk about this for a minute, all right? You know, I, I told you all, like, last night, the video that I uploaded, or well, the video that I made last night, it didn't upload until this morning, but um, this probably won't upload until late tonight or early in the morning. That's how slow my phone isn't uploading um but i was talking about how i wasn't um i wasn't moving i wasn't moving into um into a different place for a while um now I, a couple of things that i had you know that went into making that decision um the first of which is I live in a concrete block like 
like a box, you know, a concrete block box. Um, it's two, I'm on the second story, which is a drawback, but it's concrete. There's only a, there's a limited amount of windows on the bottom apartment. Um, and on the top apartment, I'm not really worried about so much because, um, if anything would, was to happen in, you know, where I live after the, um, after the decision come November, um, it is what it is. Uh, I can defend it. It's easily defendable. Um, and nobody's getting in there unless I let them in. And if they do get into my front door, that is the only point of entry. And it is like a funnel. It's, uh, it basically creates a funnel. And the way that my apartment is laid out, um, it's very easily defendable. And, uh, I mean, I could probably take out 20 guys before they, uh, before they even get one guy in to my apartment. So, uh, it is what it is. Now, no, no one man is an army. Um, but like I said, I, I can increase my odds a lot by bunkering in and trying to weather the storm of chaos that that is more than likely going to ensue after the uh, after the events come November. Um, the one thing that worries me is my downstairs neighbors are very liberal. Um, they don't believe in uh, a Second Amendment. They don't believe in a lot of things that I believe in, but sorry, this past day, a uh, state trooper sitting on the side of the road radared people, so I had to take it a little bit easy right there. I'm not speeding or anything, it's just, I don't know. Even when I'm not doing anything wrong, it still makes me nervous. <clears throat> because all they're waiting on is that one slip up. That one mistake. But anyways, like I said, they, uh, my neighbors just have a very, very different opinion on how the world should work compared to mine. And uh, they don't like the president. And uh, I'm pretty sure they are going to be uh, voting for the candidate. And uh, I just, I've distanced myself from them. Uh, we used to be friends, but they have gotten so radical in their ideology that I just can't, I can't. Um, now I'm not perfect by any means. Um, you know, but, and it has nothing to do about who they're voting for, it's just their ideology. Even if this wasn't an election year, I would have done the same thing. Because I can't, I can't, I can't even have a discussion. Because it's, oh, uh, it's all about, you know, them, like, you know, especially with the, uh, the uh, female of the, of the two down there. Um, it's all about her, 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 her. And if you say anything that she disagrees with, then you're being rude and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it, especially if it's something that she doesn't want to hear, then she automatically gets defensive and cuts you off. And, and uh, I just don't have a place in my life for that kind of, uh, that kind of disrespect. To be honest, um, I just don't have, uh, I don't have the patience to deal with it, and I'm not going to have the patience to deal with it. I don't have to. Um, I pay my bills on time. I do everything that I'm, I need to do, and, uh, I don't need them, I don't, I don't need them in my life. I don't need them in my life to survive. Um. Now, like I said, they don't believe in the Second Amendment. They don't believe in 
you know, freedom of speech. Well, let me rephrase that. They don't believe in freedom of speech um, until it's something that they want to say or they have to say. And uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to put them down or anything. It's just my experience with them have has not been the most pleasant in the past, you know, two months. It's uh, it's been a uh, constant battle with them over stupid stuff because I used to get my internet through them. Like I would pay them forty dollars a month to have Wi-Fi, and you know, all this COVID stuff happened. I lost my job, I got behind, whatever. Well, I paid them $40. I knew I was behind. I told them, you know, hey, I'm behind. Um, if I pay you this $40, are we good until I can get the money up to, uh, to pay you the full? Um, they were like, yeah, 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 it's, it's fine. Um, it's all good. Well, to my, to my, you know, detriment, I, you know, I had a little bit of, little bit to drink on a Friday night when I came home. Um, I wanted to listen to music and the noise compliance laws don't go into effect until 11 o'clock where I live in the city. So I was having a good time, chilling, you know, just relaxing. After a hard week's work, I was just relaxing, listening to music. And lo and behold, I get a phone call and, you know, <coughs> it started out as a pleasant conversation and ended up about them, 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 them. Um, wah, 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 kind of shit. And, you know, they pissed me off. They had, a, you know, she got an attitude or whatever. And, uh... I said, fuck it, and I turned up my stereo all the way to the loudest level, and I told him call the cops. I told him call the cops. I told him the noise compliance is until 11 o'clock. I'm going to play my music until 11 o'clock. Now, that was petty of me, yes. It was. It was very small of me to do that. Um, I was not right in doing that. I could have handled that better. But, and the same hand, if they, if, you know, they would have kept it kosher and, you know, especially in the state that I was in, you know, they, they just were, they started to get rude and um, snippy with me. And, you know, my philosophy is, is, you know, you get snippy with me, you're going to get snipped back. Like, you're going to get attitude back. Um, you get what you give. <clears throat> Regardless of what my mind state is, that's just how, that's how I am. Um, <clears throat> if you get an attitude and you want to get Billy Badass with me, then I'll get an attitude and I'll get Billy Badass with you. Um, I don't back down from a challenge. Now, with that being said, I still have respect for people and I don't go out of my way to be like that to people like I don't I don't make it a point to prove that I'm a badass but like I said if I get that kind of um, that kind of response or that or somebody coming at me like that with that kind of attitude then you're damn right I'm gonna have the same kind of attitude like I said it is what it is it's, it's you give what you or you get what you give and that's all I gotta say about that but anyways, after that night, they shut the they shut the internet off. They kept my forty dollars, um, which is fine. I don't want it back. They obviously need it more than I do, if they want to make a big deal about it. But you know, the deal was I paid them that because see the internet was already turned off because I was behind. Um, and the deal was I paid that forty dollars. And I would have the rest caught up in two weeks, two paychecks. Um, and they didn't keep their end of the deal. They didn't keep their end of the deal, so I'm not keeping mine. That's just how it is. Um, I, 
I would have kept my end of the deal, you know, and that's, that's the thing about, you know, knowing who your friends are and knowing where you stand with your friends. Because if you have friends that are the kind of people that you get in one argument or one disagreement, um, no matter how big or petty it is, and you, um, you act petty like that, like, you know, I, oh, well, you won't turn your music down, so we're going to shut off your internet. Well, first of all, my music wasn't playing through their Wi-Fi. It was playing off my phone. Um, second of all, that's some petty shit. And if you're willing to do that over a little argument like that, then I don't need you as, as a friend. You're not a friend. I mean, yeah, you can get mad or whatever, but <coughs> uh, friends are supposed to work through it and not and not be petty like that. Like I said, friends are supposed to work through issues and uh, make the situation better instead of uh, doing petty shit and making it worse. And as far as I'm concerned, until they apologize and you know admit what they did and how they handled the situation, they're not my friends. And even if they did that, I'm still really reluctant to call them friends. Because, believe it or not, this isn't the first time that they've gotten shitty with me. Um, whether they realized it or not. And, you know, like I said, you just gotta know, you gotta know who your friends are. You gotta know who your friends are and you gotta know who you can who you can and cannot allow inside of your life, inside of your circle. Um, my circle is very small. Um, mainly, my circle consists of family. And that's it. Um, I don't have, I don't have any outside friends. Like, outside of my family, I have no friends. You know, you know, say what you will about that but you know it's not it's not it's not because I've pissed everybody off and they don't want to be my friends it's that you know when I have time off or whatever I'm spending it with my son uh, and before my you know my girlfriend left um, or my ex left um, I would spend all my time with her when I was home her and the you know the, and the baby so I didn't go out, you know, I didn't go out and socialize with people. I didn't, you know, run around the town, so to speak. <clears throat> and I just never got, I never got that, um, that connection with anybody to build a friendship with. So, and, you know, I'm not complaining either. I'm not, you know, there's benefits and there's drawbacks from being a loner. Um, I mean, one of the drawbacks of being a loner is you're alone. You're you're alone. But one of the one of the benefits of being a loner is that you have um, instead of you know taking your mind off the things that are going on, um, you have more you have more quality alone time with yourself. And you have time to set and you have time to think and analyze um, yourself and you know you have time to improve on yourself because you have no one else to point the finger and to blame for wasting time um, because there is nobody else around so if you're wasting time then it's it's your fault um, if you're in that situation, like, you know, I mean, it's just like me. My apartment's a wreck. Mainly because I was, you know, planning on moving out, but mainly because, you know, I haven't done my dishes. I haven't done, you know, I haven't done certain things through the week that I needed to do, but I just didn't do it. And, you know, like I said, there's no one to blame. There's nothing to blame it on but myself. Because it's not like, oh, well, well, Johnny wanted to go hang out and, you know, I haven't seen him in a while, so I felt like I needed to go and hang out with him. I don't have that. Um, 
the fact of the matter is, I was lazy. I came home from work and I went to bed. Took a shower and went to bed. That's the that's the cold hard truth about it. So, like I said, it you get you gain a lot of self responsibility um, by being a loner. And like I said, it sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it sucks because there's sometimes when you know you've done everything you needed to do and you're just sitting around and you're like, well, shit, what now? What do I do now? Um, like I said, it, it's just, it's just levels. It's just depending on what level you are on mentally. Um, some people can't stand to be alone. Some people just can't stand it. Um, and when they're alone for an extended period of time, it feels like they're going crazy because they have no one to interact with. And like I said, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people that I have talked to that have found themselves in loner situations like mine um, is that they feel like no one cares about them because they don't, you know, they don't get that phone call out of the blue from a friend, you know, just checking up on them, you know, saying, you know, hey, what's up, you know, you busy tomorrow? Uh, me and so and so are going to go fishing or whatever, whatever the case may be. Me and so and so is going to go to a bar or a club or a park or something, you know. And they don't, you know, I don't get that. I don't get that. And the only time I do get that is if it's from my dad or my mother or something like that. I mean, and it's a different feeling, you know. It's uh, like I said, it's it's not it's not a you know it's not a buddy calling, you know and to an extent, yes, it, it it feels it feels good to get calls from anybody just to check up on you, um, and it feels good that your family, you know, or my family at least, uh, calls me every so every so often and uh, checks up on me. But um, I spend a lot of time alone, like I do. I spend a lot of time alone and a lot of time just thinking and. Uh, analyzing my situation like how how I'm gonna move forward um, and you know what if this scenario happens um, what if just what is you know and I go through in my head and <clears throat> I replay them you know over and over and over until I you know until I feel like I am prepared enough mentally that if that happened that it wouldn't be an issue so, and like I said, it, I'm not saying being a loner is the ideal situation um, for anything. I'm just saying that is the situation and reality of my situation. Like, that, <laughs> I am in that situation, and I would love to get out of that situation. I've been, you know, I've been trying to get out more and stuff. Like, when it's warm, um, I'll, I'll get on my bike and, you know, my motorcycle, and I'll, I'll go ride and... If I see somebody else riding, I'll go up and try to talk to them and stuff. But the thing about being a loner and being, you know, being by yourself all the time is you lose the social skills needed to uh, to talk to people and uh, to start conversation. Um, and it comes out awkward and uh, it comes out like almost... Um, almost like you're needy like you you need attention and um, that's that all stems from the uh, the awkward the awkwardness of it all because you know it's just like me I spend you know I'll probably spend a week or two without hearing from anybody sometimes and um, It's, it's difficult, like, and, you know, it, it diminishes, it diminishes your, um, social skills. It diminishes the way you interact with other living, breathing human beings. Um, so, like I said, it's just, it, it, it's a learning curve. And especially if you get, like, if you're used to getting attention 
and being the center of attention um like like let's say somebody's popular right well that popular kid or popular person man woman whatever um let's say they move out into the middle of nowhere um in the you know in the middle of a forest in a cabin and all they have now is them. Like they have no cell service, even if they wanted to talk to people or people wanted to talk to them, they couldn't do it. Um, that person is probably going to go insane. <clears throat> like I said, that, that person is probably gonna lose their sanity very, very quickly, or at least more quickly than somebody that has lived out there for you know let's say 20 years um, <clears throat> or has been raised by people that have taught them how to adapt mentally and physically to that sort of environment um, that that has a big part uh, to play in it too is the uh, the total like the re the like the relearning everything, like the relearning everything mentally, um, how to deal with themselves, how to um, how to look at themselves, and how to you know sometimes even have conversations with themselves that they were that they have been putting off for so long um, because of all the other outside distractions. It gave them an excuse to put it off, like I was talking about. Um, like I said, they just they just put it off, and they don't really take a good hard look within themselves, and you know they don't they don't necessarily feel like they have to because oh well I'm popular, um, everybody likes me, everybody wants to hang out with me, so I have no flaws. Um, if everybody wants to hang out with me and be a part of what I'm being a part of. Or wants to include me in everything that they're doing, then I must not have any flaws. I must not have any. Uh, I, I must not have anything wrong with myself because you know everybody wants to be around me, and everybody wants me to be around them. So, you know, what do I have to work on? And I'm sorry to tell you, but nobody is perfect. Nobody is 100% completely perfect. Um, it's impossible. Uh, everybody could be improving every day on every aspect of their life and I am trying to do that I have been trying to do that for a uh, for a very long time now and just recently within the last couple of years um, probably the last two years I have gotten to where my mental state is stable enough now and I have came face to face with my quote unquote demons inside of myself and sorted it out and uh, been able to live with myself um, because of the, the wasted time uh, because of the bad decisions that I've made in the past um, that I am now in the stage of where I can start focusing my attention on the outwards um, appearance like my physical appearance um, my physical shape because a lot of what people don't realize is you could be you could be you know 50 pounds overweight which I am well over 50 pounds overweight um, I had I had a very bad self-esteem issue with myself and I would eat um, even if I wasn't hungry <coughs> but that's what I would tell myself so I could justify eating, um, that I was hungry, um, I felt hungry, which I didn't feel hungry, I felt bored, and a lot of that goes back with the isolation of being a loner, um, uh, you do get bored, but once you learn to adjust and to tweak your mental status, um, to adapt to that situation and that kind of lifestyle, then you you start making things 
to do. Like you start setting up things that you can do throughout your day or you know when you're at home at night alone you start you start tweaking on things that you would have never done otherwise like uh the other night i took all of my dishes you know way this was probably a week two ago um i took all my dishes down and i all of my food out of my cabinets and i reorganized it like I, I found a better way to do it and I was just sitting there you know thinking in my head how can I do this better and you know it, it works <coughs> it's just little stuff like that you know you start to build projects in your head and then you have to take the initiative to make those ideas become actions and that's what I was talking about whenever I was talking about you know just recently in the last couple of years being able to you know say okay here's the situation I'm overweight I'm unhealthy um, instead of feeling sorry for myself and eating more and gaining more weight and looking more you know overweight and feeling feeling worse I'm gonna take that energy I'm gonna take that reality and I'm gonna switch it like I'm going to um, I'm going to turn my reality in my head, my ideas of how I want to look in my head, and I'm going to make that happen. Um, I'm going to put in the work, and I'm going to make you know make my ideas in my head a reality in my life. <clears throat> now, you can do this for good, or you can do this for quote unquote evil intentions too. Um, if all you do and all you have been um, subject to is evil people and deception and lies and yelling and you know all the bad aspects of life if that's all you've grown up in and you succumb to that and you're like well I have no other choice because that's just the way I grew up that was you know that was life every day you know that you know that has you know that your situational upbringing I would put has like a three or four percent effect on your actual outcome of your life um, now there's probably experts that are like fuming hearing me talk but let me give you a little bit of background on me um, <coughs> I was raised by my dad until I was about 12 and then from 12 to 18 I lived with my mother now when I was with my dad when I you know as I grew up with my dad okay actually scratch that keep that in mind but let me even go back farther when I was born um, this is all stuff I can't remember but it happened so I had to tell you this my mother got into drugs um, my father caught my mother cheating my mother left and at one point I was kidnapped stored in a tattoo parlor um, taken to Ohio from Kentucky and basically my father had to do the legwork to find me and it was a big custody battle to get me back with him. Um, and this is all around the time I was about two-ish, two, two to three years old. Um, took over, you know, over $10,000 to, uh, to win custody, to, to, uh, to gain custody of me. So, he gets custody of me and you know I'm growing up to the age of 12 all this time with my dad in my life everything was you know everything was pretty good but I always had the, the the want to to know my mother and to have a mom and I would ask questions all the time about it um, and you know 
if my mother sees this, you know, she's going to uh, probably disown me because she's going to think that, you know, I'm taking, you know, one side or the other. Um, but I lived with her from 12 to 18. Um, actually, not even that, probably 17. Because there was a point where I left living with her. Um, and I'm, I'm not telling you guys anything that isn't the truth. I'm not fabricating anything up. This is the way it happened as I saw it. And as I experienced it. Um, so yeah, I, I moved there when I was 12. I would say for the first uh, six months to a year, it was decent. Like, um, it, was, it was okay. Um, but, you know, my mother was with a guy, um, they had been married, but then they got a divorce because of domestic violence and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it was already that kind of relationship, uh, that I was subject to seeing every day. And, you know, nothing major happened until probably about a year in. And then the abuse started happening, not, you know, not sexual abuse or anything like that, but physical and mental abuse. Um, at one point, I was 195 pounds and being called fat. And uh, being called a fat ass and everything else. Um, so that had a very, uh, very drastic, very drastic mental um, impact on my life and um, like I said when you go through that and you're you know you like I said you're 195 pounds at six foot three and you're getting called you know a fat ass and you know fat and all that shit and being told that you don't do anything and blah 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 um, when you know me and my brother did everything in that house um, pretty much I think the only thing we didn't have to do was our laundry but we cleaned the house we swept the house we did the dishes we did you know mowed the grass we you know fed the rabbits and all that stuff and you know like I said the mental abuse didn't just stop at the you know at the you know quote unquote fat shaming which I'm not, I'm not going to say that, you know, poor me, he called me fat, or they called me fat. Um, it's more of along the lines of, um, you know, I was, you know, 12, 13, 14, hearing it almost every day, and then, you know, and then I, you know, saw my mom get hit, saw my mom got pushed up against walls, uh, my brother get beat. Uh, I get beat, you know, I, I've had multiple bloody noses uh, being choked um, and everything else um, Like I said, that's that's what I that's what I I got introduced in a later In a later version of my life. I got introduced into that style of life and that lifestyle um, Now I'm not gonna say that it made me a better person or a worse person I'm just saying that that was the circumstances that I grew up in and um, From that time period So and then the drugs, you know the drugs the you know at one point I rode my bike You know like two hours just to get my mother pills um, You know and you know I smoked a little bit of grass uh, well, I smoked a lot of grass, um, but it was more of a coping thing than it was a uh, dependency on that. On that, um, it was a coping mechanism that I was using to deal with the fact that this was my reality. Now, this was um, this is what I was living through, and then you know I met a girl. Um, she she changed like she changed me she was my first love she was the first person i ever loved like truly without a doubt loved um and you know we were together for about two years 
we were homeless together. We uh, couch surfed on people's couches for a while. And uh, <coughs> I wound up ruining it because of the fact that I was, um, that I was subject to that kind of uh, relationship where, you know, it was about sabotage and how people, um, how people treated, that's just how, that's how I looked at relationship is because, you know, that was what I had to go on, um, is what I saw my mother and her, uh, her man go through. So that's what I started that's how I started treating her and I never hit her. I never hit her but the mind games. I, I played mind games with her a lot and uh, I'm ashamed to say that. Um, like I said, I, I mess with her mind and like I said, I'm ashamed of that. Um, I will never ever do that to anybody else again. But like I said, it, that was, <coughs> again, that was how I, uh, how I witnessed the most interaction relationship-wise, that's what I saw. And I took that and I and I started adapting that into that relationship. And if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for me doing that, we would probably still be together today. Um, and she was, she was, she was, like I said, she was, uh, I mean, I still think about it, if that tells you anything. Um, so, yeah. But, what I'm saying is, after all of that, after everything I went through, <coughs> I still made, I still put in the work to becoming a better person than the person that I am today. Um, I didn't sit back and, you know, at 25 years old, I'm not going oh well you know this is how I was raised so this is how I am now I'm gonna just do the same shit and expect it to turn out any different than me I mean I'm not I'm not going to be a victim of circumstance and I'm not gonna keep I'm not gonna keep repeating a pattern of bad behavior just because that's what I saw growing up um, not gonna do it. So yeah, I think I've rambled on enough. <laughs> Going on about an hour long video. Sorry. Um, I will see you guys on the other side. Like, share, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, leave your comments for me. I would love to hear some input on the channel. Um, like I said. I will see you guys on the other side.